Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Columbia City. Okay, it has been a while, I apologize. I have been very busy with finals and it got to the point where I was like, I have basically no spare seconds. I don't have weekends because of very, very time intensive obligations. So I am just gonna not upload for a while. Just be okay with it and uh, come back and start uploading again when the time comes. And the time has come, we're back. And I hope that I can stay consistent moving forward. Uh, there should be nothing blocking me from doing so, really. So, uh, we, without further ado, are going to get started here. So, this episode, we're going to be doing a couple various things. Uh, I think the main thing we're going to be doing is this sort of rail trench this railway trench that we're going to work on later in the episode, which is going to be a lot of fun because it's going to involve some assets that I don't think any of us have really seen since, I mean, the Kerala season two days, uh, and it, it'll be fun. Um, and the other thing that we're going to be doing is, I mean, just working on this neighborhood over here. This is the neighborhood by the freeway uh, near downtown, and it's the neighborhood that we built a while ago and never really detailed. We're going to detail a little bit of it, not too much, uh, as in we've got a lot more to do, a whole episode worth of detailing here. But for now, we're just going to do what we can. I, well, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do this episode because I just popped into the save after you know, a month or whatever of not of not doing anything. And I, uh, I entered the save and I'm like, what should I do? I'll just start building something. So I worked in this neighborhood and then it ended up uh, over with the railway trench, which I've been putting off for a long time. So we're going to work on the railway, the railway trench a, a little bit later. But for now, let's just focus on what we're doing here, though. So... I've been using some of these Japanese parking lots from the workshop, uh, which are really good because they work well with slopes because they've got retaining walls in the end. So you see that one by the church over there. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then this church, I'm adding like some graffiti on the walls and stuff because uh, I like to add graffiti and murals uh, whenever I can in the city just to spice things up a little bit. And yeah, I mean, you saw I placed uh, some... Uh, on the, the bridge over there, when it became uh, ground level, I had to deal with asphalt and medians and stuff, just because normally when a bridge go or an elevated segment uh, goes to ground level and there's a median, it does not work quite right, and it's not, you know, in full conformity between the two segments, so I fixed that if you, uh, if you saw that over there. And then I'm sort of combining these newer and older buildings, because that's sort of what you see in, you know, Seattle, like a very interesting combination of new and old um where you'll just have old a whole block of old buildings and then a very very new apartment um right near them and um i found that interesting so we're trying to focus on on doing that in a lot of places um and then yeah i mean working with these slopes is sort of annoying i mean what i've learned to do is try to use very narrow buildings on the slopes ideally one by four or one by three but sometimes two by four or you know two by three works um and those those are usually fine um it's just sometimes the doors are misaligned but when you're looking at it on a large scale it's it's fine and generally the fps in the city has gotten a little bit weird so Let's talk about transit. Uh, next episode, you're probably going to hear this analysis sort of again of, of the transit in in the city. I've been... This is really the thing that I've had trouble with throughout the series so far, uh, is figuring out how I'm going to get transit in the city to work, like what I'm going to use, like what networks, what types of trains, etc. So I figured out what types of trains I'm going to use. I'm going to use the uh, Seattle light rails from the workshop and... What I'm going to do, so there were really th four options. The first one was I used Metro Overhaul Mod with some below ground subways that were actual sort of New York style subways um, with, you know, not newer light rail cars. Uh, and th that I combined that with some above ground light rail. That was sort of the initial plan. It ended up not working out and I decided, you know, Metro Overhaul Mod's a little bit too laggy. I don't think I'm going to use it here. And then I tried to use the LRT networks from the workshop, which you can actually have above ground and below ground. The only thing is the below ground stations are very buggy and don't really work that well. Uh, so I was trying to figure that out. I couldn't get the below ground stations to work that well, so I just sort of scrapped that idea. And then I moved on to actually using Metro Overhaul Mod exclusively, uh, basically. I was going to have one uh, light rail track that was using the LRT networks. That ended up just sort of not working because Metro Overhaul Mod, as I had initially concluded, is just too laggy. 
So like, I tried removing Metro Overhaul mod from my save uh, just sort of immediately after working on, um, I'm, or immediately before uh, starting uh, the, the, the the new transit project, which is going to be exclusively light rail. Uh, I, I removed Metro Overhaul mod from my save, and I literally, my FPS was, before it was about 12, but it was like a really laggy 12 that was pretty glitchy, especially around uh, the tunnels or elevated segments of the Metro Overhaul mod stuff. Um, but then I ended up, I removed that, and I ended up at something like 25 to 30 FPS, but like really smooth. So I realized I, for a city of my scale, I, I need all of the frames I can get and Metro Overhaul Mod's not really going to work. So then I went back to the old idea of using the LRT networks and having them go underground at certain portions, but then not using underground stations. Uh, and that's sort of where I am right now. I'm not sh sure exactly where I'm going to end up, but I'm actually leaning towards scrapping underground stuff altogether like not having a subway in the city and just doing above ground light rail and the story behind that would be that the city didn't have good infrastructure in the past for rail at all like it had absolutely no no subway at all or anything like that maybe it had a subway in the past but it's just too far gone and too old and the infrastructure is too old to refurbish and the idea is now we are sort of moving forward with above ground light rail which is i mean since a lot of cities don't want to spend too much on new infrastructure. It's sort of the best the activists were able to get, some above ground light rail, and then out in the suburbs, uh, you have the light rail operating at its own separate tracks, um, sometimes in the middle road, but usually on separate tracks, but in the downtown area, all they were able to get is light rail on the road with some priority or something along those lines, and that would sort of be the story behind it. So it's not uh, wholly unrealistic. Uh, on the other hand, you do want a you do want a subway system for a city of this scale. So that's sort of what I'm struggling with here. I'll hopefully figure it out and we'll hopefully have something uh, working in the next couple of episodes because I really do want to get the basic transit network going so that we're able to build around that as we move forward. Uh, on the other hand, I could also expand without building that uh, transit network and I mean because the idea is realistically uh, you might see uh, roads and everything uh, in the suburban sprawl uh, expand before you get uh, the before you get any transit infrastructure in the first place uh, and and then or at least new newer light rail infrastructure and then the light rail sort of is built around that rather than the other way around so that's another thing to consider I, I know generally where my light rail is going to go but maybe if I build my road network and generally uh, build around that with the light rail, it might be more realistic, uh, considering the story of that, where it's a newer, a totally, totally new infrastructure network, you know, like last couple of decades, which came post suburbs um, and you know post suburbanization. So I'm not sure I'll figure it out, but uh, point is, those are the things that I'm thinking of doing and I'm probably going to scrap all my work from the next episode which is going to be building the whole subway network because it didn't quite work out that way. Anyway, okay, we are working here on the sunken uh, rail line, the the railway trench. So this is going to be, this is not a subway, this is a like heavy rail sunken line and it goes directly through uh, the waterfront area, if you know where the viaduct is, the Alaskan Way Viaduct in Seattle, we've got one of those here in this city. Everybody keeps telling me to remove it, but once again, we're not, just because Seattle has removed it doesn't mean I should remove it here. The point is that it is ugly, it's very ugly, and, um, the point is that it, that was in Seattle in the past. This city, since it, I mean, it doesn't have, it's not going to have a subway likely, uh, it's not quite as effective as Seattle in terms of uh, modernizing its infrastructure and making it uh, more more walkable, more uh, people friendly rather than car friendly. Um, so we might, you know, the Columbia City here, not ideal the way it's developed uh, and it's not as successful as Seattle, for example, in sort of retrofitting its infrastructure um, for like the, the, the needs of new Pacific Northwest citizens because, I mean, you know, Seattle and Portland have been very good at uh, creating good new infrastructure, you know, in the past couple of decades, uh, but and tearing down old infrastructure like the Velasco Way Viaduct that's 
that's very antiquated and car-centric that completely destroys the downtown of a city. Uh, but it's here, and I, it will completely separate the waterfront from downtown. And I'm it, the, the point is not for it to be here to be a good thing. The point is for it to be here to remind us that that's sort of how the city was initially planned, and that we've got other different priorities that we're trying to work with now, but they haven't quite overrun the old car-centric um, view of how the city should be. So anyway, um, enough of that. The Railway Trench. We're using these assets from, I think, CG Voss, which is like a totally OG City Skylines asset creator. Uh, and the last time I've seen these used was in Coralis' Season 2, which I maintain is the best City Skyline series of all time. But he used these in the suburbs, and I just remember having, you know, seeing the Railway Trench there and just absolutely loving it. I never actually used these assets that he used, but here I'm using them with, you know, much more modern... Uh, capabilities, so it's a lot easier to use them, actually. Um, but it's this railway trench where, I mean, actually, there are probably something like 100 or 200 of these different individual assets placed to make this entire railway trench work. Not very triangle efficient, but I don't think it's too heavy on the triangles, this model, so... And, and I didn't really see a drop in frame rate after placing it. It looks really cool going through here, and it's another example of this sort of old infrastructure that the city hasn't really modernized next to the viaduct. And having those two together will look really cool. Um, and I mean, once again, not not necessarily good because once again, you you want you don't want this to be the way the downtown is planned. This is not necessarily good. It is just how it is. And um, it downtown is by no means perfect um, in 2019 or whatever year we're set in for Columbia City. So yeah, I'm, what I'm doing here for the decoration, and also this isn't actually based on anything. This railway trench totally not based on anything. Uh, it's just something that I thought, looking at the infrastructure here, uh, would fit very well uh, in terms of the story of this area and the like the space I had to work with so that's what we're using we're using the railway trench but I'm using these like low poly bushes um, to sort of cover up the glitchiness of the size of the railway trench because this is not completely flat and the railway trench itself doesn't necessarily work too well with terrain so I mean we've got the rail under uh, like in the trench but above ground it, you see it's pretty glitchy, so I'm covering that up with those uh, Padelmo bushes, which I, I wasn't really sure exactly what to use to cover those glitches up at first, but then I ended up figuring out that Padelmo's bushes would be exactly the way to go, and I'm very happy, I'm very happy with my, my decision there, and I used some of the other Padelmo, like, flowers and stuff just to make it look nice. Uh, and the idea is it's a really cool overgrown area. I might try to add some vines in the actual trench itself. That could be pretty cool. Um, although I feel like that's something that would probably be maintained. Uh, even though the, the, the grass and bushes above ground might not be maintained. You probably need to maintain the vines so they don't get out of control if you've got... Because we're actually going to have cargo rail. This is going to be a shared line. We're going to have cargo rail and passenger rail sort of going through here. Um, like, I think what the plan is going to be to have a couple of, like, old abandoned lines... Uh, outside of downtown that were sort of fragmented due to suburbanization and then we have this line in downtown itself which used to be here but uh, when the city was urbanized completely it went below grounds uh, into this trench but was never really covered completely although we do have tunnels here like it's not going to be for this entire segment that it's going to be in, the, in this trench we're going to have these these tunnel segments uh, for actually most of it it's only for I think um uh, well, it's probably a couple hundred meters that we've got this trench um, going, and then it goes seamlessly into tunnels. We're using Railway Mod to get the tunnels to look good. The Railway Mod and the networks from it work very well, and we're able to use concrete tracks and stuff, and I'm very much, very much a fan of that. And I use, to keep, like, to keep people from getting into the interior of this sort of area, uh, like, so they don't just jump in there that'd be pretty bad we've got you saw those glass barriers that i sort of placed on the the roads uh and then we have the like the, the prison fences on the sort of exterior uh so like for the road crossings we got those, those glass sound barriers from uh de casa or however you pronounce that name and then you've got 
the the fence segments the prison fence segments i believe from bad peanuts new prison fences which by the way we will make a prison hopefully in this series that'll be cool i saw two dollars twenties prison that looked pretty awesome I'm, I'm happy we finally have like a nice collection of prison assets that's cool um but but anyway so we yeah like we place we place in, the, in these areas that the train is underground in we're placing just buildings like we would because i mean that's just how uh it, it was developed um the rail like this is all it wasn't like these tunnels are completely new um like the, the trench was never extending for this entire segment um it's just it still exists where it is but these other areas we are placing different apartments and stuff like that. I'm trying not to go too high density uh, because I, I want it to match the areas around it. But on the other hand, having this really high density apartment development, like sort of right next to the viaduct is pretty cool. And I feel like it'll look absolutely awesome once we sort of develop the area a little bit more. I'm also considering downloading some like concrete, some of the concrete highway networks from the workshop. I've actually got a Roads United pack that I've made that I'm not using here that has concrete highways and they have yellow um, lines in the on the left side and that I feel like it could be pretty cool. The problem is it's really glitchy with nodes. I, I haven't looked at the concrete highways from the workshop, but I feel like the nodes probably work better on those. But we'll have to see because I... The nodes also might not work well on the, the workshop uh, concrete highways, and they also don't have yellow lines in the middle, so I'll figure that out. But I do want to add some variety in terms of the highways, because the highways in the Pacific Northwest are definitely not uh, completely, like, asphalt um, built, like, based. There's definitely a lot of, of concrete highways in the Pacific Northwest. So I, I want to make sure that that's done realistically, uh, if that makes sense. But yeah, and then another note is, in this episode, we don't really work on because, like, as you can see with the viaduct, the pillars are not quite right. Um, they're pillars going through the bottom um, road, or not the bottom road, but sort of the one in the center, if you don't consider the... If you consider the ground one to be the bottom. Like, what we've got for the viaduct there is, like, this sort of road in the bottom with a bike lane, and then, or like, a bike path, I guess. And then the two top roads, one in each direction, or the actual highway and the connect to that main interchange. Uh, but yeah, and then also over here, we're working on some sort of landscaping around this... Uh, I don't know, it's this, it's, we, we don't have an entrance, like an on-ramp onto that viaduct, but we do have an exit into downtown. Um, and I guess this is just really old, antiquated infrastructure where you didn't really get that built in, or they couldn't get the, uh, approval, or something like that. Uh, but there's only one on, or one entrance, and it's pretty narrow, uh, which, I don't know, it looks really cool. Like, the way this sort of integrates with the, um, the rail infrastructure here, and... I mean, yeah, like, once again, we don't, we don't work with the, the, um, the viaduct much this episode in terms of, like, making it look better, because it obviously needs sort of a lot of, a lot of work to look better, because it's not, it's not quite there, uh, we, I need to change the pillars, I need to build the area around it, like, the, the waterfront area, I think we're gonna build a Pike's Place type thing on the waterfront, rather than sort of above the waterfront, if that makes sense, uh, in, in, in our version of Seattle here. Because I think that could be cool, like a Pike's Place type market right on the water. I I think that I think that'd be awesome. Um, but we'll see how that turns out. Anyway, uh, I've talked enough. I've rambled enough for for now. I think we're gonna hop in game now, take a look at what we've built. Because the rest of the time lapse, I'm just gonna cut out because it's all the same thing of me just placing these fences and these bushes, etc. Uh, and you sort of get the idea of how we built this. Now let's just take a look at what we built and put it in context with the rest of the stuff uh, in the city. All right, let's take a look at what we built this episode. Here's the sunken railway. It looks pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Just ignore the pillars that are sort of floating in on the viaduct there, because they're very weird, I, I agree. But uh, this looks awesome, I'm not gonna lie. This looks pretty cool. Uh, this sunken railway trench thing. Um, and then I also like the landscaping we did over here. It looks very overgrown, um, which is very characteristic of a place like this. Um, and oh yes, we got a rail going, or a, a, a freight train going through, rather. Look at that. Just glorious. Uh, we're gonna be having a lot more, uh, like that, just going through downtown, just freight train, 
going through downtown, which is just so cool to me. Like, uh, I think it should come out the other end here. Um, yeah, here. Ignore this. Yeah, this is quality. Look at that. Uh, but this will end up... This line's totally temporary. Probably. Uh, although this is generally, like, the way... The direction that this line will go when it does go through here. Um... But that'll connect over here and then I guess out this way. But yeah, it looks it looks awesome. Uh, this is like once again the main thing we did this episode. But I think we did some other stuff over here. Like we built this park. We actually built like a homeless encampment right here, a very small one. But uh, we're gonna have a lot more throughout the city because it's Seattle, or well, it's based in Seattle, and you have to be realistic, uh, as you can see. Um, and then what else did we do? I mean, I think we did the detailing over here, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then over here. And then we placed some buildings here, which were not previously there. But overall, not too much new. I placed this building instead of the, the, the building that was there before, because the building that was there before disappeared. And I also, I wanted to place this building because it looks pretty cool. Um, and then, what else? I mean, I think that's basically it. Like, this episode was mostly focused around working around here. Another thing to note uh, is you won't, like, you'll, we'll talk about this in the next episode, but uh, one of the new developments is that I've, once again, this is an old save. Uh, like, I'm working with the save that I had from the end of this episode, but the work I've done moving forward is actually going to be totally scrapped. So this is, I guess, the present state of the city anyway, um, except for this. This building is going to be smaller now. Uh, so you see this building is the first Canadian place. Here's the Rico version. It's very large, but there's also another version, which I'm going to switch it to because I've gotten some complaints in the comments about that being the, like, the tallest building in the city. So that's gone, um, which is going to get some mixed reviews. It's now a lot smaller. I like that. I think that was a good change because now the biggest building in the city is the Columbia Center, which... Another complaint has been you should probably remove the Columbia Center. It's too similar to Seattle because I mean it is right out of Seattle And I might I might I get to find a better option though first um, And also the assets got it's a little weird down here So I would like to find another asset to use here instead because yeah There are a lot of reasons to remove that but the new building which is going to be the main building in downtown Is going to be this building it is a uh, observation tower from Auckland, New Zealand, I believe. And I initially placed it over where the Space Needle is currently placed, which the Space Needle is going to be gone because it's too similar to Seattle. Uh, so that's going to be removed. But I initially placed it over there, but I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. It needs to be placed near downtown. I tried placing it further, you know, closer to the, the harbor area, which it could fit there. But I think it looks really good just right there uh, in the middle of everything. You can tell me what you think, but that's the tallest building that we're going to have in the city. Well, not I guess, it, yeah, it's a building, but our, our tallest skyscraper is still going to be the Columbia Center for now. But that's what I'm thinking for the tallest building, if that makes sense. Um, and so, I mean, this I'll, I'll end up basically saving with this for now. And then this will be the new, like the, I guess for now, at least what the new status of downtown uh, so for anybody who wants to hop over on Patreon and get the save game, you will get a version which has this tower in it because that is what the current plan is. Because uh, I think that looks a lot better than what we had before. Um, and yeah, like let's see, let's try to look over the trees like this. Yeah, see that looks really well rounded right there. Just everything about that's really well rounded. We've got that San Francisco radio tower over here, which is really damn tall. This is a tall asset, but it's just so well made. I really want it somewhere over there or over on a different hill, so like maybe up here. Um, but I definitely want that in the city, so we're going to also have, have this, which looks pretty cool. Um... And yeah, I mean, basically, like I'm work, I'm, I'm working on a bunch of stuff in the city, mostly with mods and trying to figure out how we're gonna get the transit network to work. And I think I figured it out. It's just gonna be much simpler than I thought before. It's all gonna be above ground. That's the plan. Just because I keep trying to get below ground stuff to work, either with LRT or just with um, 
Metro Overhaul, and it doesn't, it just doesn't work. Like, when you get a lot of these tunnels like this, uh, it just going through the entire city, it just gets really laggy and very annoying, and then the trams, the tram underground stuff that I was trying before would not be functional at all, like, you'd have no transit in downtown, and it would also lag the city and be very, like, it would be uh, pretty glitchy, like, it's really glitchy working with those. So, the current plan is to turn this main avenue here into a sort of a tram line, uh, or light rail line rather. Um, and the trains, I think I have props for them. I can try to see if I do. Seattle. Mm. Let's see. I don't think so, but I think I can look at them in advanced vehicle options. The trains we're going to end up using are, I think they're probably currently under passenger train. Because that's what I've converted. No. Metro. They've got to be. Yes. Wait. Uh, no, they're not under Metro. And those are old trains. Maybe they're still under tram. Yeah, they're under tram. Okay. So they basically look like this. Um, they are the actual um, sound central, uh, sound transit. I, I, I don't know uh, what the specific name of the Seattle transit system is, but... Uh, they're really cool tram cars like they look awesome. There's a version that has a Delta advertisement on it uh, We've got a three car a six car and a nine car version and that will have different different ones on different lines and then We've got this other uh, PLU ad one, which is pretty cool But yeah, I mean the idea is those are gonna be the light rails we use and they're probably all gonna be above ground although that could change as we move forward, I will have to figure out what we end up going with. But all I know is for now, the main change that you'll see after this episode is we have a railway trench. It's this big, basically as large as the main skyline, except moved over a little bit. And then it's tunnel for the rest of it. And then we'll place buildings above here uh, and it'll be very well integrated or as well integrated as it can be with this horrifically bad looking viaduct here. Um, but ignoring the pillars of the viaduct, this is some pretty cool infrastructure around here, even if it's also terrible at the same time. Um, and that was the goal in the episode. So hopefully you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like. It really is appreciated. Helps people find the videos. And um, I mean, you can subscribe if you're new around here. I know I haven't been consistent with my uploads very you know, more recently, but that's going to change as I explained earlier in the episode. And... Ooh, this is aw oh my god. Look at that. That is glorious. Get a nice screenshot of that right there. Uh, that feels like a nice I uh, it's it feels like wow, I'm lagging like crazy. Autosave time. Autosave why? Please autosave no. Yeah, autosave takes a long time to go. It's been going for like 10 seconds now and it's frozen my city. There we go. Okay, we're back. But, see, oh my, look at these streets, though. Wow. Wow. Wow, this was, like, exactly what I was going for here. I absolutely love it. And then you see that sort of, oh my, yes! This is exactly what I want with the city, um, in terms of, like, how it looks on ground level. Ooh, this doesn't work quite that well. We're on ground level here, though. And... Yep. Oh, yes. Uh, okay, anyway, I mean, if you want to do what I'm doing right now, uh, and just go around in the city like I am here, uh, you can pop over to my Patreon and get save game access, or if you want to get videos early, you can hop over to my Patreon. I, you can do that for just a dollar a month. You get my videos whenever I finish them. Uh, and if you want your name in the credits, you can also do that over there. But, I mean, if you just want to generally support me as well, it's very much appreciated because it allows me to create videos and spend time doing that and it's it's very much appreciated because it takes a long time to make these videos but when I make them I get this is exactly what I play this game for right here look at that oh yeah oh that is so good I'm just like I'm not even I'm not even gonna move we're just gonna sit here and like look at that that scene right there uh for now yeah, uh, if you want to look at my rants and stuff, I do that on Twitter, uh, however useful that is to you. I also post updates, like you would have known when this video was coming out from my Twitter, generally, at least, and you would know, I mean, what my favorite Pink Floyd album is, which is Animals, Fight Me. 
uh, you just stuff like that. That's what I post on Twitter. You can look at Instagram where you'll see screenshots like this. I think I'm going to go post this screenshot right here to Instagram right now because it's really good. And look at that building in the background. It, this is, oh yes. Oh, I love this so much. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, that's about it. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. Uh, and I will see you next time. It won't be five months from now. It'll be soon. So uh, I'll see you next time.